Hey, Bruce, I just unmuted you. Okay. You good to talk now? Yeah. Ah, oh, perfect. Can hear you. Let me see if I can unmute everybody. Unmute all. Oh, you do got a nice setup in there, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, command central. <laughs> so if anybody emails you, Bruce, that's having trouble signing on, they can email me and I can send them a new invite. That might be, there might be some glitches, but everyone seems to be coming on just fine. See Vinny there, Everyone, everyone's popping up. I'm here, Jim. Can you hear me? Yep, here you go. You got in okay? Yeah, so let me see now. I got my face in the middle of this thing, so <laughs> let me close that. Okay, now I got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You know, uh, my uh, techno technological advancements uh, haven't gotten caught up with Vinny since Army days till today. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of missing now. I don't have a computer specialist say, hey, fix this, <laughs> and I'll do something else for you, whatever. Those days are gone. It's now me taking care of me. So, so I have uh, I kind of wrote it all down here. Uh, so I don't know how much eye attention you'll get, but I have like sketch out like two and a half pages. I know, short story long. Yeah, just so everyone knows, there's a little chat function on the bottom there. So you can click that. You can see if anyone's typing up. I see Beth had mentioned something already. Okay. So, yeah, so that can you can leave that open. A lot of times how we're going to uh, – other boards are proceeding is that the, the chairman kind of takes a peek at that from time to time. And if someone has a question, you can recognize them. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of ending it with – that's all I have, any questions, but <laughs> see if I get that far without a question. Whatever. Can you hear me okay, Vinny? What did I say? Can you hear me okay? Oh, yes, I can hear you, yeah. The, the technical word that we were going to use here is social distancing. What was that again? Social distancing. distancing. Social distance. Yeah, I got that into... Okay. Uh, uh, probably line four, and I do bring it up multiple times, but I'm kind of going to amplify on that in a few ways. So, you say, uh, my office looks the, the messiest so far, but whatever, we'll go from there. Vinny, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Trish. How are you yeah, doing? Trish. Good, how are you? Okay, I'm great. My, um, my phone is thinking. It keeps saying waiting, waiting. So I didn't know if there was a, just an issue with this video thing or uh, if you couldn't hear me. No, that. I can hear you. Jim, <laughs> okay. is there an issue with the video, video thing or is it just uh, her phone? Trish, I can hear you. I can't see you, but... Uh, yeah, I can't see you either, Trish. But can, okay. you see, can you see us? No. <laughs> uh, oh, really? Okay, well. Uh, oh, Trish, so on the bottom left, there's a like a video camera. Uh, okay. Is there an X through it? So I'm not even at that point. It just says join with video, join oh. without video. And it just oh. keeps saying waiting. Oh, okay. And it's still like thinking, so. Join with video, right? Yeah, it just keeps saying waiting. It's spinning. But oh, anyway. Can okay. I had that earlier today, but I, I guess I waited long enough and I got on. Whatever. <laughs> All right, let me let me try going out and then I'll come back. Okay. Also, uh, Jim, we have uh, Kim Lyons, Beth, and Steve, where there's no video yet. I don't know if they can 
Well, Steve's mic has got a red through it, so he's yeah, off. Yeah, so it looks like, so I, I can unmute Steve. I wasn't sure if he was doing it for his own, um, but uh, not not everyone necessarily will have a video capability. It depends on how okay. they're logging in. Okay. Hey, Ben, I can see you. Hey, how you doing? All right, so down at the, oh, okay, now I can see. It says I don't have a camera on my, okay. Oh, you don't? Is that what you're okay. seeing too? I can't see you. I just says I have two Trish LeClaire's iPhone. No, yeah, the well, other, other one's only... probably still loading. Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Anyway, I can see the comments at the bottom now, so that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Beth, I understand you don't have a camera. That's fine. Not sure we're great looking at, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see Jim. Hi, Jim. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, little comedian in this, right? <laughs> so. I Is Kelly see. back already? Or? She said she'd be back at 5.30. She said she would log in or whatever. She said she uses Zoom for business, realtor, realtor business. So she's used to it. It was my first try this morning, I think. This is like what the kids are using for school right now, for virtual school. Okay. Well, anyway. Yeah, Vin, what do you think of this morning? I thought it went okay for It did. First it try. went well. Yeah. Um, Bruce jumped in with the comment when um, Deputy Chief Poirier asked if there any comments from the Board of Health, and that's fine. I there, probably there only had one other thing, but I'll, I, I, I saved it, whatever. Um, I, I may get to that, whatever. Oh, Tina's coming in now. OK, great. Deputy Chief, you might want to hold up your phone a little bit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Oh, yeah, there you are, Mark. Kelly's here. I just don't know how to put my video up. Hi, Kel. Hi. Welcome back. I just walked in the door 10 minutes ago. Oh. Perfect timing. Oh. I was going to call you, but I figured you were in the middle of a flight, and you know how that, you got to put your phone on mute. Oh, or, yeah. Uh, airplane mode, rather, excuse me. Yeah. Which, you know, most of the time I did. How do I how do I put my face on it? I don't you know what I don't look good. I don't think I want my face on. <laughs> you, you do sound different though. Maybe yeah, I got coronavirus. Oh, I'm wondering. No, it's all those coronas you drank. You know, I did. I had coronas too. You know, um, no, it's, it's all it's it's everything's in bloom down there. So everyone's got allergies going crazy at the same yeah. time. It's not much better up here. Yeah. Because some of the forecasts were like, uh, Wednesday would be bad. Wednesday was bad. A couple of days last week were bad. But I went back on Claritin, so that Mark. helped me. Where's Mark? <laughs> hey, Tina, how you doing? Hi, Vinny. Chief, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm hanging Hi, in there. Hi, Tina. Hi. Has it got your good side, Mark? Oh, hello, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Video. Welcome to Command Central. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So, Bruce, Vinny, the um, so the agenda went out, and it uh, and Karen posted the link to this meeting since it's a public meeting, so it's on the town's website. So there, you may have a, a few interested folks, perhaps. I don't know how widely spread the meeting had been sent out though. Uh, I got a text message from uh, Representative Kennedy saying he's having a town meeting on COVID-19 in about 10 minutes or okay, 10 minutes ago, whatever. And I said, well, I won't be tuning into that because <laughs> we're having our own. Kelly. 
Kelly, you don't look that bad. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't look that bad. Hi, hey, Kel. ID followed by pound. Otherwise, just press pound to continue. I just muted you, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just jump right in there if you want. So we'll start at 7.30. Yeah. Do I see you there? Hello. How are you doing, Dad? Good. How are you guys? Hanging We're in. Our first meeting. <laughs> first official meeting. Correct. I'll, I'd say of the Board of Health, but the rest of it, you know, we had a meeting this morning, so whatever. I think we're going to have a meeting, official meeting that's going to be so, Vinny, if, if it's okay with you, I'm going to mute all and uh, and let you start the meeting without mute. That, that's yeah. I'll 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 be I'll start at 7:30, which is about a minute from now. So that's okay. fine. That's fine. So everyone's muted except for Vinny at this time. Okay. And if you have a question or a comment, you can put it in the chat. Vinny can. Uh, Keep I an eye on the, the side. Uh, and then you can, uh, Vinny, you could let me, or I think Bruce might have capabilities too, to unmute people. Uh, but okay. I believe right now at the moment, you can unmute yourself if you want to. Uh, but, you know, we're trying to keep it so that everyone's muted at the moment. So we don't have all that static in the background. Okay, I guess I'll uh, start the meeting. Uh, it's Thursday, March 19th. It's an emergency meeting of the Bellingham Board of Health. Uh, myself, Vin Forty, uh, Trish LeClaire, Mem uh, Board of Health, Kelly McGovern, Board of Health, Agent Bruce Wilson, and Minutes Clerk Tina Griffin. I recognize the 14 participants and five store managers if you're all online. We're here to address the COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, the numbers today increased from the previous value by 71 today, I believe it's 300 and something. It was 30 plus in the two or three days before that. Um, some are saying it's because there's more testing and that testing is revealing more positive cases. You could either go with that or play the devil's advocate and say that it's because the public just isn't doing social distancing, you know. Uh, I don't know. Anybody, everybody has a comment on that. We can save it to the end. Today's emergency manning meet, meeting put together a list of uh, things and supplies were ordered or at least placed for a total of $160,000. I'm just going to say generally for masks, wipes, gowns, etc. I'm not sure what went into it, but I was informed by the health agent that we got a good number of items out there that um, emergency management, police, fire, board of health, and other agencies within town will need. Um, in the past few days, I've observed town supermarkets and a department store where just too many people are clustered around the registers. The clustering, in some cases, you only have 20 feet of register clearance till you hit the general aisle or an individual item aisle. Those baskets, you know, if they're using baskets, at least they have a five foot distance in front of them. But they were stacked up all the way around the side into the aisles. People had to keep either touching people or nudging them to move the basket so they can go down the next aisle to shop. So that said, I, I think the social distancing in some cases isn't, isn't working because people appear to be panicking. Not sure what it is with the paper supplies, but 
toilet paper was number one, paper towels, and then napkins. That is the first items to go, and then it's food. So if you arrive at a supermarket at nine o'clock in the morning when they open, by quarter of 10, there's not a piece of food left. Mostly meats, um, there are cheeses and other things, but even those are beginning to go. Frozen products disappearing as well. So I don't know if people are thinking they just have to get enough food for, um, I don't know, six months. It, it leads me to say in a near future, uh, when we get a handle on this, we'll probably be responding either fire, police, or somebody else to food rotting or hoarding situations. It's, it's got to go somewhere. And I'm just not sure if the same people are coming back or different people are coming back and whether they're all from our town. But it's just, I think it's out of control. So um, it, I think the way of adjust, um, addressing this emergency and get in touch with um, you know, store managers and have them appoint some individual to be like a, I don't know, a cot manager or a, a I would call it, it's like the, you know, processing people out so that they don't stack up, they leave adequate spacing between the cots um, and not block an aisle because it's just gonna believe, you know, I'm gonna believe that people are contacting each other, either touching them or touching their cot to get them to move so they can get around them. Um, the two experiences I had were supermarkets in Bellingham and one was in Franklin, uh, where last week the lines were so long, it was just unbelievable. I could not believe that many people at five o'clock in the afternoon, especially when they got in the store, realized there was nothing left. So they bought whatever and they stood in line, sometimes with a few items. Um, some stores now have just started sanitize. They have an employee sanitizing all the baskets, not as they come in from the outside, but as you go to grab one, there's one or two employees sanitizing all the handles and where the child used to sit in the old days um, on some of these cots where you put food now. The other thing they're scanning all the, uh, they're sanitizing all these scan devices and the places where if you have to take it out of your car, you place on a stainless steel or a plastic area. They're sanitizing that. Most people can scan in their cot, so the only thing that needs to be scanned is the, uh, the only thing that needs to be sanitized is the scanner. One supermarket, which is not in our town, which is BJ's, is, soup, is actually cleaning every single item every time a customer touches it. Um, I discussed it with someone else and they said, well, you could do every third or fourth person. I said, well, that's okay. If you believe there's only one in four that possibly could have an infection. That's hard to imagine someone can do that. You know, you have to have, uh, how do I say it? The ability to foresee viruses, which you can't see with the naked eye. Um, that said, this virus is kind of interesting. Uh, there was a, online thing from the public health listing the common cold, the uh, flu, influenza B, and corona. They all have a lot of things in common, but they have a lot of things that are different. The most interesting thing is with the flu and the common cold, within 24 hours exposure, you'll probably get symptoms. Corona appears to give you a four day window on average. I'm not sure that's been proven for four days where you're asymptomatic, which means is you have no fever, you have no cough, you know, have no body fluids running, you know, nose, mouth, whatever. So that means you can greatly affect a lot of people. Um, the most vulnerable population is those over 60 and anybody at any age with an immunocompromised system or on chemo or drugs that compromise your, your immune system to get rid of a specific cell type or condition. That said, um, some stores now are opening, if they open at nine, they open at seven, and those 60 and older are allowed in to get food, they can get anything. And 
Older people don't like standing in line, finding out there's nothing there. You know, they get into the store, there's a long line. They get to the place, there's nothing there. So this is a good idea. It also keeps them away from younger folks and millennials, which technically the group that, let's say, congregates the most maybe, and um, ends up giving it to the seniors. So we take care of those senior citizens. I'm one of them. <laughs> so uh, what I'd like to say is hopefully other stores will follow suit with this and that we'll have specific hours before the general public gets in there to get senior citizens in and out. Um, most have a plan, they'll get right to what they need and they'll get out of there. Um, I also think that some stores are using self sanitization, let's say kiosks, but they're not located exactly where you have the cots. They're between the in and the outdoor. So to get to that device, you have to cut, a, cut through people coming in or cut people off coming out. Also, those products I had scattered all over the floor where they're used because they don't put them in the dispenser or they're outside all over our parking lots. Assuming the device does what it's supposed to do and that everything that you sanitize may have a contamination, the devices have contamination. Someone going out to clean up the parking lot, if they're not picking up with a sweeper, is picking up that device, which now could be or possibly be contaminated. So it's a risk to an employee. Um, I think I'd rather have an employee cleaning everything with gloves and then putting the cleaning devices in a proper location and not littering the storefront or the parking lots. Um, anyway, uh, so I would probably, I would encourage all managers to figure out a way of um, cleansing the cots, cleansing the checkout areas regularly, if not, for every customer that's using a cot or coming in. We need to keep social distancing. So we need to keep six feet on all sides. If there's two registers and there's a barrier of food, that's close enough. It's in front, if everybody has a cot instead of a handy basket, you almost got six feet. You just need to leave another foot between you and them and you got six feet. When you get to the register, the clerk and you will not be six feet apart, but they're usually wearing gloves and we'll assume that you're not going to be coughing on them. If you have to cough into your arm, don't spread potential disease if you don't have to. Um, so let's see, uh, I guess I really have it. Uh, that's, that's all I really had. Um, and I guess I'd now say if there's any questions, I'll try to answer them. Um, and if any of my other members or my agent have uh, any comments, feel free to, uh, or anything I missed, which I thought was going to be a little longer, it wasn't too bad. Do you uh, want me to um, unmute everyone for now? Yeah, you can unmute okay. everyone. And then, like I said, if the um, board members and Bruce, my agent, <laughs> like to comment, I missed anything. I said if you, Bruce, or Kelly, or Trish would like to comment on anything I've missed, I welcome it. I, you know, pretty much did that in 10 minutes. That wasn't too bad. Can you, can you hear me okay, Brittany? Yes, I can hear you, Bruce. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to be working out to each of the school managers and actually doing it. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute, you're broken up a little, Bruce. Yeah, one second. So... I think we have to go one at a time. There seems like a lot of background music uh, or noise in a lot of these uh, folks calling in. So if you can silence everything in the background as best as possible, that'd be great. But I, all right, so I unmuted Bruce and I have Vinny unmuted. Uh, if you want to just, uh, yeah, so like Andrew put in a chat question, I can okay. unmute you one at a time. I think that's probably best for right now since there's a lot of static in background. But Bruce, go ahead and then I'll, uh, if okay, Vinny wants to better. call on Andrew next. Is this any better, Jim? Yeah, this you sound yeah, great it's now. Better. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, it, it's my intention to meet with each of the, the store managers on site um, and, and, you know, do a quick, quick walkthrough. 
um, and what their planning is, and maybe discuss any potential bottlenecks. Um, you know, and try to make a smooth process. You know, take a look at where we can uh, stack up carts if we get a big run on the store. Uh, the, okay. the big thing is, you know, making sure we have smooth areas. We don't want to create a, a traffic bottleneck. Um, and that's why, you know, it was my suggestion earlier, that, you know, to have one one member kind of acting as a, uh, a, a referee or, a, or somebody to, you know, guide people and, you know, stack or move the, the, uh, what do you call it, the, the carts around or, you know, redirect people down a different aisle if there is, there is a blockage there. But, you know, like I said, it's my intent to, to be with each of them. I've spoken to well, each of them on the phone and all seem to be in favor of, you know, trying to come up with something that works. Um, and I guess there's other towns and stuff um, where they have stores where they've reached out and, you know, so it's, it's something that's going to be a, a learning process for all. But I, I think that we should be able to come up with something rather than the, the free for all that's going on. Um, and again, the, the cleansing wipes, they have any hit on that. I did take a ride by one of the stores today and there's a fair amount of wipes out in the parking lot. So if we can uh, have the store personnel wipe it, I mean, well, uh, the, the Walmart tends to, to, to have a, a good setup there where they've got the greeter, hands you a cart that he's personally wiped down. You know, if we can follow suit with that and then maybe that'll help the, uh, the trash and litter part of it. Um, or, or at least put a, a, a trash receptacle and, and some signage up. I'd like to have a sign at each door, you know, reminding people let's maintain six feet of personal um, social distance. Um, so, you know, we can work on that. Um, and, you know, and, and you know, I'm open to hear from anything from the different store managers. And again, like I said, I'll, I'll be out, out there in, in the next day or so to each of the stores. Um, I believe Vinny probably will also be by the stores there. Hopefully, you know, he'll identify himself and, you know, try to work with each of the, the stores there to try to, you know, ease this in as best we can and make it a, a good shopping experience for all. Yeah, Bruce, I forgot to mention that. Yes, I, I should say that I, on Saturday and Sunday, I hope to get there early because um, that's usually when the biggest crowd occurs when they open and um, just see how it's going. And if it's not, let's say flowing properly, I'll see a store manager or someone designated, you know, if they can, if they're not going to do it, uh, if they designate someone so that I can tell that there's someone kind of trying to coordinate the flow of activities out of the store after shopping, that would be useful. I'll be able to key in on that person and say, you know, maybe we could do something else. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's going to be hard in some stores because there's only 20 feet from the register to the first aisle. And then the second aisle is perpendicular to all the separate aisles with the food or product items which makes it five to six cots, seven cots, and you're out into the, the T and you clog the, uh, let's say the freeway, you know, so. I mean, it was, it was key, you hit on it earlier, but the reopening the store really for the seniors takes a good part of the population out, help spread it out over the day. Um, and I, I think that was a great move on our track there and hopefully the next one is with that. Yeah. I had a question. Are we are we having problems with um, the volumes of people at these stores? I went by and I didn't see any issues over there. Do you think people have gotten what they needed for the next week or so, so there shouldn't be a, a mad dash? Hmm. Let's hope so. Uh, I, think I was at Market like Basket it. today and it was quite crowded. It was hard to get in and out. And then once you get into the aisles, there were, certain aisles have a ton of people, some don't. I'm not sure why. I guess, I don't know, maybe salad dressing and olives don't have a run on them. But some areas are quite, how do I say it, clogged. And people will stop on their phone, put their basket on one side, reach over the other side, and literally cut the entire seven foot aisle completely off. And I'm going like, really? Anyway, some people, you know, are just not observing. There are other people in front of them or in back of them, you know? So you go, Jason, excuse me. Not, I don't think we're at the time where we need to start doing like, if your trash day is today, you can go to the grocery store. We're not at that point, right? We, we don't need to do something like that. No, I, I, I don't know how we would do that. Like I said, right now, most stores, except maybe Market Basket today, had no paper supplies. 
I mean, people even got smart. They said, well, if I can't get toilet paper and paper towels, I'll buy the napkins. Stop and shop, honey. Yeah, I mean, I was there, it was a Tuesday night and Stop and Shop had zero paper products. Zero um, pasta. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. There was nothing there. Um, uh, look, look, yeah. Looking at the, uh, the, the cats that come up here, if you'd open it up to, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the uh, audience here, Vinny, if we could. I, I believe there's a uh, um, comment here from, Ian Spencer, uh, Andrew Say, uh, if we could, you know, recognize one of them, let him talk. Sure. Let's see. So, uh, so Dan. You want to do Andrew first? There, yep. Go for it, Andrew. Andrew, you're unmuted. Hey, good evening, everybody. How are you, Andrew? I am doing very well. I'm doing very well. Sorry, let me get a little bit farther away from my laptop. I think that's yep. up there. I do agree they need to calm down and stop hoarding. Trust me, we, you know, we have hoarding problems in town, but usually it's junk. We're gonna have yeah. food hoarding problems in the next seven months. Well, I think uh, we put some case limits in place and folks are <laughs> adhering to them. Okay. I do notice they're not hoarding perishables like milk or cheese or you know, dairy products because they can't keep it past the shelf life too long. But meats you can freeze, Paper towels, I guess you can just stack them up until they become a, uh, what do you call it? A ingress or egress problem or a fire hazard. I'm, sh I'm sure the chief wants to hear that. Yeah, exactly. Some people yeah, have no idea where they're putting all this uh, stuff. The mayhem that was last weekend was making sure it was safe for everyone. Okay. Are you guys hearing a reverb or an echo? Yes. Yes, we are. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm not sure how to fix that. <laughs> Andrew, let me ask one other thing. Would you say the market basket transaction accounts increased in the last two weeks? It is, uh, or I've seen is that normal? Off is the past normal? Five days. Yeah, it's starting to go back down to normal levels. Okay. Okay. That, uh, that's kind of an indicator for me that folks are going back to normal shopping too. Okay. Now, are you just for the Bellingham store or for all of them? Uh, for the Bellingham location. Okay, fine. Because today was, you know, the upper parking spot facing the road that leads, that goes across the street is McDonald's. That entire thing, all the way down, there were no car spots. <laughs> I mean, I got one because I waited for someone to leave, but it was like, uh, this was uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. So that wouldn't be peak hours. Um, you did have, I didn't look at the meats too much. I think there was a little bit of hamburger. There was no chicken that I could see. Oh, we had plenty of yeah. yeah. But that was at two o'clock and I didn't need any of those items. I got what I needed and I was able to get out. I went to the self, uh, what do you call it? The um, 10 items or less and there was only two people there. So it did work out right. But getting into the store, trying to grab one of those wipes for the basket and trying to get out which, you know, you're very close to the door when you're in that first checkout, at the fast checkout. And I couldn't believe it, I'm saying to myself. It was like three people trying to get out the door at the same time. So I just waited, since I only had two bags in my hand, and said, really? But anyway, and then I called Bruce to say the parking lot was a disaster with wipes. Gloves, That's gloves, you know. Like That's why we hired the person to wipe down the parts. Okay, right. Hmm. Okay, but today we only had that little self-service kiosk in the middle of the in and out which probably not a good location for it. You know, I don't know where to put it, but. For Whole Foods? No, no, excuse me. This is, I'm talking Market Basket. Oh, I'm not for Market Basket. Oh, okay, sorry. Sorry, I didn't realize you were Whole Foods. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pardon me. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Um, so for us, we have a person that is assigned to be kind of our checkout police. Okay. A line of people queuing that will wait until uh, we're ready to bring them into line starting tomorrow and then I'll them. Okay, that's great. We it last weekend to make sure we maintain order. I had two people maintaining the line if it went further past our deli, but, um, you know, Friday was unforeseen. We were, 
we weren't expecting that after the state of emergency was declared. Yeah, yeah. I think the governor said, now I, I realize the supermarkets are exempt, but I had brought this up. It went from 250 to 200 to 100 to 50 to 25. And I think, is that where he left it or he say 10? I thought he said 10 because the president said 10. Paper is still at 25. I think you're right. But that said, obviously, supermarkets and department stores are exempt. And I said, well, okay, but those are areas that are going to be a lot busier than your uh, high-end shoe store, clothing store. I'm trying to think of places. Uh, bars and restaurants, obviously. It's high volume during the evening hours and the weekend. So that was a good move. But the other places, as I just mentioned, this, some of the supermarkets, I haven't seen them calming down yet. But again, I'll go this weekend and we'll see how it goes. Because everybody who was on, let's say, work at home was not on the highway, which means is they should have gone shopping during the day. And I know if you go at five o'clock, because they did that Tuesday, it was, it's unbelievable. And um, there wasn't anything available. So, you know, you had to pick and choose like items that you were searching for that were not, um, let's say, easily stored for long periods of time. You know. So, let's let's um let's move on to Dan. So he's got the opportunity. Yes, go ahead, Dan. I believe Dan Dan just one is here to listen. He mentioned he didn't have any questions yet. Okay. We have uh, Trish. Did you want to say something? You had something about hand sanitizers. Trish, Trish, Trish. Uh, unmute, the store. Trish. There you go. You just, You're unmuted now, Trish. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I was just thinking that you know we have hand sanitizer stands at most of the stores going in. Not all of them have it. Right, right. Um, I think it would be good for all the stores to have it going okay. in and going out. It just helps prevent the spread of germs. Right, um, what right. they have on their hands before they go into the store. Not that everyone's going to use it. We can right. put signs that, you know, remind people, right. just like you said, with the distance and, and everything. Um, but it definitely will help with the spread of the germs. Right. Yeah, and if they're exiting, when you have a, a, a what do you call it, a kiosk to dispense them, they need to maybe be reminded, please place the item unless you're worried about cleaning your car door off, but then you throw it in the parking lot. I think what they do is they keep it on the basket around the handle as they're going out. They're the only one that touched it on the way in, they cleaned it. Yeah, really don't need one on the basket going out. The doors are automatic, so it's not like you have to open the door. Um, but then they throw it These, in the parking lot. You know? Yeah, but I'm not talking about wipes. I'm just talking about the hand oh, sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, okay, They sorry. have the automatic ones. You don't even have to touch it. Just put your hand underneath there. I got it, okay. Gives you the right amount. Clean your hands, yep. go food shopping. When you leave, after touching the keypad and everything, you're okay. cleaning your hands on the way out before okay. you get in your car and you start touching your face and then you I go and it. touch your family. I, I just miss, helps. Yeah, I miss uh, interpreted hand, hand sanitizer for wipes with sanitizer. That's okay, right. thank you. So Beth, I see you went to a market basket today at 5.15, it was okay? <laughs> she says yes. Okay, great. No lines, no reading. Okay. Thank you. I, I also went to Market Basket today, too. Beth, Beth yes. is unmuted if you want to add anything. Not crowded. No, I didn't think it was crowded either, to be okay. honest. Well, 2 o'clock was, and that, to me, that wouldn't be a crowded time. I would think 5. But again, like I said, I think now people are working at home. So it may be Monday or Tuesday, and then during the weekend, uh, not the weekend, but uh, during last week, Thursday or Friday, five o'clock was an hour wait to get out of the store. It took me two minutes to pick up two items, bananas and milk, and it took me an hour to get out of the store because you just can't cut the line. That wouldn't be, I think. Well, I think you might have just. I think you might have just been there on a bad day, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I've been going into the stores often okay. myself, and I find the flow has definitely gotten better. Okay. Um, and Market Basket isn't even as crowded as it usually is before okay. this coronavirus. Okay. Let's see what happens on the weekend, though. And Beth, thank you. I, 
see they did have chicken okay good good any of the other store managers present would wish to comment at this time or I see Kim doesn't have a mic. You can you can type in there. Kim and we'll pass the message on if you'd like. I know I know I I've spoken to Kim. Yeah, we can we can all see it, days. Bruce. Yeah, we can see it. She wants to type it in. Okay. Are you busy with just seniors or are other people trying to get in with the seniors? Have you, have you had any issues with, with um, you know, people trying to get in um, other than the seniors or, you know, how are you handling that at the door? But uh, a 20 year old millennial trying to come in with us older guys here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, that's good. Okay. So that's going to be helping with the amount of people that are in the store at the same time, too, because now they're adding these extra, what is it, an hour and a half extra? Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can hear so. you. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Sean Morris. I'm from Market Basket. I'm the manager. I'm just figuring out how to get into the Zoom. Hi, okay. Sean. Hi, I've, I've listened to part of it. I, I was trying to comment, but I've just figured out how to talk now. Okay. Um, what, what questions and concerns do you have, please? Um, the, the big thing is going to be bottlenecking you know when I, when I get into the store that we want to see that you know we can open up the the, the whole process so that you know we don't have a lot of people on top of each other maybe uh -huh. closing every other lane uh, and again you know having to have an individual kind of directing you, you know and, and stacking the carts up the aisles and, and trying to leave room so that people can continue through or get through I, I thought about the aisles Bruce I thought about the aisles Either way, you can have the shoppers going up and down the aisles. Um, we've been making, I don't know, I heard some of you were in there shopping today. We've been making periodic statements, and I talked to my corporate office about making a reader board or a um, on our outdoor chalkboards we can put it, but also putting like a stanchion in as you come in the door to mention to self-police yourself, follow a six-foot um, rule by the government that they, they want to impose on, on that. And uh, we're working on that at our corporate office to get a sign put up. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. So I'll be out there. Like I said, we'll just do a quick walkthrough and, 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 you know, I'll comment. You can talk to me and, you know, we'll, we'll come up with something that's going to help with that. Sure. But like I said, the, the sign, I think the, the random or the, the constant use of the microphone and reminding people of self-policing themselves. And people have really been very good about that as well. People are stopping. They're actually being more conscientious of each other. And I think the message is out there now, loud and clear for most people. I did hear your concern, though, Vince, about okay. leaving. And I, yeah. will, I will address that tomorrow. I, I do agree with you. People are in a hurry to get out of the store. Right. Where we, we could slow them down. It may be another stanchion on the way out. Please allow, other, please allow your fellow customers to leave uh, in an um, orderly manner. Yeah, because I think it's happening is people coming in to go get a basket cut the line trying to go out. And some don't yield. They just simply dash across, the person stops, and then everybody backs up, you know. There is a second entrance that goes towards the middle part of the parking lot, but I don't know if you know it. The primary way of people coming in and out is near the Douglas Spirit side. That that side sure. is the worst congestion. Sure. Well, it's what about this? If you could come up with a way where we could leave the carriages outside, the, the customers wouldn't cross that line and they would bring the carriages into the building and directly come into the building and they'd never have to cross to get a carriage with the customer leaving.
but we'd leave yeah. the carriages outside on the sidewalk. But I'd have to get the other business owners to um, agree to that because there's obviously going to be some congestion and um, interfere right. with their business as well. But yeah. I think that way we could actually uh, eliminate a lot of the problem. Or maybe okay. modify, you know, cut down the number of carriages in there. So we'll, we'll, let's look at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. that might work. I think you have a, there's a, either a hobby horse or some kind of music thing out um, toy out there for younger children if that's still there. But if you put the baskets up against that wall, mm -hmm. obviously we don't, well, we don't want to block egress, but we certainly don't want to block ingress for yeah. well, purposes, well, you know? Um, I'm sure there are other departments that will echo that. We don't want to create a hazard, but inside it's simply two lines crisscrossing. And sure. I think um, whoever brought it up, people are trying to get out, Trish, they're, they're trying to get out of there. And yep. I, don't, I don't know. Mark, Maybe are you- Because they've been there too long. I know why. My, my concern is if we start removing carriages and there's not as many carriages, are people going to be fighting over carriages? It's possible. I mean, we, we, right. We don't want to start brawls because people are right. trying to, you know, find things, you know, baskets or carriages because they want to carry more food than someone else. I mean, people mm. are going to start getting a little crazy if you start doing that. Right. All the more reason for a greeter person that's actually wiping the carts. You know, you can come in the door, the greeter's going to hand you a clean cart. So yeah, that might work. Yeah, too. I mean, that's good. I think doing the hand sanitizer towers does help with the spread of germs in the store and outside the store. I mean, just doing those few things is going to help the spread. Um, you're going to have less trash. And people are becoming more and more aware of what's happening. I think some people were a little naive before. Um, but now it's starting to sink in. So people are going to keep their distance. Hmm. They're going to be more cautious on what they're doing. Yeah, it's sort of like, I guess, time, you know, people were just not believing this is real. Then it evolved into a pandemic. And then they said, well, it's not in my state or it's not in my town. So who cares? You know, and that's probably some of the, the rationale there, you know, is, well, we don't have anybody. Well, I think. I think people, I think, whatever, you know, so. I think people were concerned that stores were going to shut down. There was going to be no food. So people right. started freaking out. Right. Um, but now, you know, they realize that as soon as something's gone, they're stocking the shelves back up. Right. So they will be able to get some. It might not be the next day, but, you know, a couple of days, it will be there. Hmm. I mean, the, the pick up on that, Governor Baker was very clear that the stores are an emergency part of protocol and that they are to remain open and there is no intention of shutting those down. Right. Of course not. No, I'm like a good merchant. You remind your your customers during the course of the day that you have an even flow of product coming in all day, all night. And you just right. rest, keep them rest assured. You have to take a common sense approach to this. It doesn't have to be drastic or, or, or crazy. We just have to keep reminding people of what the government's protocols are and, and, and try and help them and remind them to do it. Yeah, and I think you guys are doing a great job. I mean, you know, you're keeping the, the shelves pretty well stocked for the amount of people that you guys have coming through there. Um, and, you know, people know that if they need something, you guys will have it. May not be yeah, that no. day, but it'll be the next day. No, and, and we are focusing all our stocking mostly at night other than just um, keeping the owls neat during the course of the day. Um, I, the, like I said, the bulk, we have 15 people in there stocking overnight. It, okay. And that's when the bulk of the orders, that's done. So we keep those people out of the way of the customers. So we, we have the egress as well, or the, um, the six foot with them as well. One other thing, Sean, while I have you here, because one of the other things I always started doing every time I went into market basket was, picking on a few of the managers, the store or the, uh, what do you call it? The dairy side manager. Yes. Because they didn't have the new style uh, F ashray flow where the air was uh, coming through a grate that held the product back. And then you switched everything over so that we did not have all the milk, all the dairy, all the cheese, the entire row, that whole, section of the building blocking the air vents 
and uh, this happened during our former agent's uh, tour of duty. But um, I went in there the last couple of days for to, just to get some food, and there was uh, some cheese, no milk. I think the guy was going to put some milk out there, and then he saw me. He immediately put it on top. Uh, and there was, uh, what do you call it, yogurt. So I said to one of the girls who was putting stuff out, I said, all this stuff must be cleared from the vent. So you're blocking the air vent. Now, I sent uh, Agent Wilson in the next day, or the same day, and we have a temperature meter. And he shot the back ones. They were 38. It has to be within 38 to 41 degrees. So the product actually meets the deadline of the expiration or best use date. The area especially because, you know, it could get go bad and get someone sick or you buy the product for a certain price and you don't get to that date. If it's a cheese where you use just so much, you should be able to run it out in four or five different meals to that Vinny, what, are, Vinny, what well, are you trying to get to? What I'm getting to is I told them they needed to move that stuff. When he went back out there as well, the ones on the outside were 42. In the future. Vinny, I don't, I don't think we have to worry about it at this time. I mean, we okay, can't even, they're right. not even keeping stuff fully stocked at this time. Well, thank you. I thought, I thought this meeting was about. It, it about is about safety. COVID. Sorry. It is. He gets, I, I he gets carried I, away a little bit. I'd be happy to talk sometimes. to you about, about the safety of my product, but okay, tonight I thought we were you. talking about the safety of our customers. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay. Um, Anybody else? So anyway, I think you guys are doing a great job. I did today when I was there, I, I heard over the intercom about keeping the distance and cleaning your hands and wiping your carriages. And I think those are all important things to remind people as they're shopping. Yeah. All right, well. I'll be happy to meet with you, Bruce and Vinny, tomorrow. Anytime you want, we we can walk the store and go over it. Okay, but is there anything else you'd like me to take care of? I think that's it. Um, you can lock the else? price of lobster down. <laughs> I I hear you can get it real cheap at the dock right now. Actually, the lobster men can't sell it to us. You can go down to Hampton and get it pretty cheap. <laughs> I had a question. Does Market Basket have those hand sanitizer stands already? We have the wipes. We don't. We don't have the liquid stands. Yeah. We, we provide them at the meat department, but um, our company goes with the, um, the cloth. Would that be something that you guys could possibly get, or no? Because I think at this point of the game, maybe in the future. But at this point of the game, I think um, I, I think that is all depleted around the country. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mark, Mark Poirier, are you still here? Mark, Mark you're, un you're unmuted, Mark. All right, yeah, I'm here. But I just, you know, if you wanted to chime in anything about, you know, the entrance and exit, um, you know, we want to be sure that we don't block those in any way. Um, you know, maybe you might have something to shed on that. Or... Well, all I'm concerned about is the, uh, the keeping the egress uh, open. And uh, I'm sure uh, if someone's going to be wiping the carriages, that, that, can be that person's job to make yep. sure that those are maintained. And I, and I can go with you, Bruce, if you'd like, and we can have a discussion with the manager. Yeah, that might not be a bad thing. I, I, okay, I think, I think no worries. Right. Just let me, just, just give me a time, all right? Okay. Thanks, Mark. No worries. Bruce, are there any other calls coming into the office besides the groceries? Any other? Any other issues coming into the into the office as far as uh, calls into? Um, just ignorant people who are cleaning all the all the contaminating people. We had a uh, an unnamed electrician out on the site who exposed uh, a plumber and three metal workers. The job superintendent, um, his wife was exposed to some of the worst. Sick, um, and he's out being tested, but he decided to come into work and he affected about nine people. Uh, Tim and I had a lengthy conversation with him in today. A little breaking up there, Bruce. Are you able yeah, to hear that? 
Did you catch any of that? Coming? I heard it. I heard you. Okay. okay. And then the other, other bottleneck is getting people tested. The growing symptoms there's a lack of, of test kits, so it's difficult to get the, the CDC to authorize testing. Mark and I have been diligent working with him most of the uh, um, the old Walgreens site there and able to reach to uh, test our personnel as needed to show some symptoms. But other than that, people are going to Milford Hospital, the private doctors, and they're not getting the testing done that really needs to be done. Hey, Bruce, I think uh, so. We're looking up so audio echoing. So, uh, <laughs> If if you if someone has their computer audio and the phone on right next to each other, it tends to echo because you got both audios going at once. That might be if anybody has that, that might try and help cure this. I did hear also from the what is it, the world is it World Health Organization? Um, that ibuprofen was something not to take. Has anybody else heard that? It makes the symptoms actually worse, not better. I, I hadn't heard that. I yeah. have heard that as well. I just heard it on uh, the World Health Organization site as I was in the airport. Yeah, so if someone has a fever, I would suggest using Tylenol versus ibuprofen until you find out what you actually have going on. Mm -hmm. We should probably post that somewhere. Those are all the questions I have. Anyone else? Um, I don't think I have any questions. Mm. Oh, can we see that supply list of stuff that we end up getting? Oh, sure, absolutely. And do we, is, we should probably go through that closet too to see what's in there or did you already do that? We need that all over there. You already did that? No, but uh, we're going to have to do it. it. Laura and I did oh. that too and kind of organize it a little bit so it's not as cluttered. But uh, it's our intent to take out all the glass out, go through them, look at them, make sure the batteries and lights are working, and, and you know, try to get a, a total image. Check. Maybe check with Jimmy Terry and find out you know, exactly what we need. For yeah, there must be masks and stuff in there from oh, yeah. before. Do we have the MRC behind us if we have to do these inoculation drills or what? I um, talked to um, one of the former members. He said that he left because after 2004, the inoculation we did, nobody commented back from that group for almost two years. So he left. Did you reach out to him? Yeah, I did. Right. No, no, no. Did we reach out to the, the list? Of no, people? I asked Bruce today to contact Terry Jamie and get us a current list and we need to do like a drill of the list. Everybody gets called, like we get yeah. monitored by the state and everybody has to chime in whenever they get home or whenever they get it, that they're We had a quite a good list just from Bellingham of medical staff. Right, but the MRC can be another town near us. Mm -hmm. It's whoever yep. volunteers. And then they don't volunteer just for Bellingham, they volunteer for a region. Right. So but I remember they're willing to go to town any town, town and region to yep. or city. Okay. Well, I, I did have quite a lengthy conversation with Jamie the other day. Um, the vaccination is at least a good six months out still. Um, yeah. I know. As, as we get closer, closer to that, she was possibly thinking of going through another drill. Recently, Mark, Corey, and myself, and Laura went through a drill at the high school maybe a month ago. Yep. We have that all in our manual. We have the whole thing all for yep, something no, exactly like this to happen. It's our step by step. So we're, we're ahead of it. We, we, we have that. Um, we also have an update on the for the board as well. Mm -hmm. One thing to add before we even get to think of inoculations, which now looks like seven months is going to be a year. We need to worry, as, well, let's say not worry, but plan for a swabbing as we do a drive-through for swabbing. I guess paramedics can help and other medical personnel in the MRC for um, that event when it occurs. They said in the next two weeks we would get kits. 
but I'm assuming the bigger, more sensitive areas, those with actual cases or presumptive cases, are getting the test kits first. But the governor did say approximately two weeks before they can go statewide, but I don't know if that'll really happen because I don't know how many volumes of kits they're gonna need for every Board of Health to conduct these swabs. Well, Milford Regional doesn't even have the test kits yet. No, That's I know. something that we're working on. So I don't see us getting it for a little while. Yeah. By then, hopefully there'll be enough um, clinics, urgent cares and hospitals that will have it that we won't even need to be testing because there'll be enough of them. The problem with some of those things is right now to get a test, you need a doctor's note, a this and a that. That doesn't get to the majority of the people. That the results are. We just about want to 12. drive through and get a swab, photograph the ID, and then get back to them. Either way, saying you're negative, still keep your social distancing, and we'll win the battle eventually, I guess. Uh, to get the test results, it takes about 12 to 24 hours. Okay. We're being told five days. What was that, Bruce? Four, four to five days. Okay. Yeah, some places are four to five days, but the actual test itself does take about 12 hours, 12 to 24 hours to cook. Well, like I said, the more we test, the more we'll uncover the, um, the number will increase before it decreases. So. Okay. How long are the kids out of school now? To the seventh. Wow. That's probably going to change. I thought it said until further notice on the sign. It did. On the high school sign, it did. So did the senior center. Yep. I mean, Governor Baker had it, but I'm, I'm, I'm almost certain that's going to be extended. Yeah. But I think the seventh is wishful thinking. I don't think it'll happen. It'd be nice if everything goes back to normal by the seventh. Right. My kids aren't going back until after April vacation. Okay. Um, so the restaurants are all, everyone's uh, accommodating the rule. They're just doing takeout, oh, delivery. Sorry, Kelly, you, you've been away on vacation. We spoke with each and every restaurant, all 70 of them. Um, all have been very cooperative with delivery and takeout at this point. Um, all, the, all of the, the chairs and seatings have either been ribboned off or the chair has been turned upside down on the table. So, I mean, you can go in and order your meal um, and pick it up and take it away. There are no, nobody at the restaurants. Um, but I mean, if you're ready, you might be in the lobby waiting for it to be prepared, but no more than 10 people in the lobby at a time. Okay. How about the post office? Are they going to slow down or we're still going to get our mail? Everything's still. I don't think that'll stop, but we'll see. The federal government hasn't done, decided to lock down any areas. Because Amazon is, has a. Uh, they're slowed down. They can only deliver what medical supplies and right, right. something else. I don't know. I was expecting domestic flights to stop. I was shocked. I, I rented a car just in case. Yeah. They're not screening any of us coming through there. Really? No. No temperatures, no asking a question, no asking, oh. no, no masks available. I had my own, but mm. they, uh, yeah. Yeah. Strange. I mean, you wouldn't even know it, know there that. I mean, you you. Well, that's an exaggeration. You knew, but not like what I was reading about up here and talking about up here. Was like, it a good size airport? I know it's yeah, not like a, a Logan, like, Theodore Green, whatever. My plane had maybe fifty people on it. Mm. You know. Probably because it's a, it's a small airport. They're probably not screening. It's an international airport, maybe, so it's a good size airport. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Out of Atlanta, right? Sorry? Atlanta? No, Savannah. Oh, Savannah, okay. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so. Uh, Anybody else have questions or concerns or, or something they'd like to add? No? Do I hear a motion to come? I I was suggesting maybe that we um, try to meet like once a week. 
Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, Jim, if you can chime in here. The town hall is having a daily meeting at 9 o'clock. And again, it's on Zoom. And if we invite them, Jim, if somebody wants to you know, kind of get a feel for what's going on. Sure. You, you want the Board of Health invited? I, I, you know, if they're, if they're interested, I'm sure. Certainly. Yeah, if you're having a Tuesday weekly meeting, Miles will just will chime in and then we can do emergency management and health at the same time. The next meeting is on the 7th, April 7th. Okay. All right. Can I make a motion to adjourn? We have everything. Second on that. Somebody? Aye, second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. Okay. Aye. Board Thank of Health you. is adjourned. Thank you for joining Thank in. Thank you, guys. Be well.